people shouldn't really think about whether you know someone is a woman scientist or a man scientist. In an ideal world, we, people should just care about science, right? Actually, I was fortunate um, to grow up in Serbia. There were no stereotypes uh, regarding women in science or engineering. Uh, gender balance in schools focused on science or, or math was, was much better. Um, almost half of students were girls. Um, and of course, my, my family was, was very supportive, so I grew up not even being aware of that. I, I became aware of gender imbalance in science when I came to Caltech for grad school and realized that there were only a few women in the building uh, where I was working. Uh, and the fact that I grew up not knowing about it was, uh, um, you know, fortunate for me because I, I essentially didn't know about stereotypes that helped me probably, uh, you know, develop my confidence and, and uh, at least overcome that first range of obstacles that most girls are facing uh, if they develop interest in these fields. I feel that as scientists, it's sort of like a kid in a sandbox all the time, right? And uh, I, I really enjoy that. And I, I can't think of any other profession that allows you to do that, right? You just figure out what game you would like to play. It's like your experiment and or your project, and you do that for the next few years or, you know, next uh, uh, 10 years, and people uh, give you money to build that sandbox and, and to play in it and and uh, and you do it and you know it's uh, and, you, and you just uh, may even do uh, something that may change the world and I I really can't think of any other profession that uh, that that allows you to do that and I I, I feel like that uh, justifies all the hurdles that we have to face along the way because you kind of end up being a kid in a sandbox your whole life <laughs> People ask me, women ask me questions, okay, what is the formula? What should we do? When is the right time to do this or you know, have kids or get a job and so on? And I, I don't think there is a formula. So it's a lot of trial and error or you do things and then you make them work. <laughs> and uh, I really don't think there is a formula for success. Actually, people succeed in so many different ways. And I made so many, I mean, I've, everybody had so many failures along the way, but just the ability to tolerate failures and self-correct along your trajectory is, is important. And uh, I was really always focused on you know, doing the next experiment that I never really cared about things that were coming along the way, like you know, tenures and promotion and so on. That was all secondary. Okay, let's let's do the next experiment, and we ended up doing experiment after experiment, and all of those things kind of happened along the way, uh, which I think was good because getting promoted or getting successful was never really my goal. My my primary goal was just getting experiments done. When I was picking students, of course, like everybody, I, I was careful, but um, also, in, you know, I was always picking people with whom I would like, like to work, you know, kind of who would be my, my partners in the lab. And uh, about a third of uh, my, my group members were continuously women, because of course a lot of women were coming to my group because they were feeling more uh, comfortable working for a woman advisor. Uh, and then with men who were coming to my group, I think they were just simply open-minded. And uh, many of these people, both, both women and men, um, went ahead and, and started their own groups. And it's really wonderful to see that that um, at, environment kind of propagates through their groups. They also have a lot of women in their own groups. Um, I think more than an average group would have, right? Just because they um, are used to, you know, working in such an environment.
for most women, they feel more comfortable if they are, you know, surrounded by, by other women, right? And a lot of women who came to work in my group, I mean, they, they told me and others right away, they just felt more comfortable working with a woman advisor. But, you know, it's interesting that also some of the men who worked with me told me the same thing. They just felt more comfortable having a woman advisor and many women need role models, you know, and I, I, I've been thinking about that, and again, going back to my kids, you know, that they need role models, right? If they're just surrounded by, by if they're interested in science, but everybody doing, you know, science or math uh, or engineering is a guy except for their mom, you know, that's, that's probably not enough. Uh, so I consciously, you know, picked the... Uh, female tutor uh, for, for math for my older daughter uh, when she wanted to do some advanced math. You know, female tutor who is also a cool girl, so she sees that, you know, you can be cool and, you know, and, and know math. And I think those kinds of, of role models are very important, both for, for uh, little girls and also for, for women later on, to, just to see that, that it's possible. They need to be comfortable with their choices and they need to be actually confident. Uh, and I think working on that confidence is uh, the most, probably the most important skill that they can develop, especially if they're not surrounded by many other women. You know, everybody talks about imposter syndrome and, and women dropping out of the process. If they're confident about their choices, you know, then, um, then they can just keep going and you know stay focused on their on their final goals. Follow your passions and enjoy the ride. Uh, that's very important. <laughs> um, uh, I really think if you follow your passions and you focus on great science, that really drives you and and all of the the other things that happen along the way uh, cannot influence your confidence or trajectory as much because you're just focused and fixated on that you know final goal which you can achieve and that's science. Mm -hmm.